Hi guys, so this is a long-awaited video, and this video is going to cover everything in Lux Algo signals and overlays. At the moment on my chart, it's called Lux Algo Premium. It's the same thing. It does not matter. I'm going to be going through this entire indicator, explaining to you what everything does, how you can use it, and it's going to be very easy to follow, just like my price action concepts video. I'm going to do one now for the premium. So let's get into it. You load up the indicator and you're gonna see the signals and you're gonna see some candle coloring. So these signals, when you load up the indicator, are called confirmation signals because they are there to confirm a trend. They are trend-based signals, meaning if the trend starts going down, you will see a signal. When the trend starts going up, you'll see a buy signal. And you can see here, when the trend starts to go down, we see a strong sell signal. So if it's if it says strong in a red box, this is considered a stronger sell signal. It's part of a larger downtrend. So you can see the market's been downtrending for a while. So you'll see a strong sell signal because it's going with the trend. So you see it relies on the trend changing direction. And when we're on in an uptrend, let's say we are to see another buy signal here, it will be a strong buy signal because the macro trend is going up. So they're very easy to use. And then we have our candle coloring. So we have green, purple, and red. Green means the market is going up. You can see the market starts going up, means the market's going up. Red means the market is going down. And purple means the market might be going sideways or might be a bit choppy. Purple candles, for example, you might want to avoid trading on, just as an example. You can see here, we have the purple candles and the normal buy signal because the market's kind of, you know, it's doing this choppy motion. It's not really forming a clear, clear direction. And then we'll see X's on your chart. So these are exit signals. And these are basically suggesting, hey, you might want to be looking at taking profit on your position. So even if you're not using the signals and you're just wanting to know, hey, why, when might be a good time to exit the market, you can use these. So you see here, this red X at the bottom of a downtrend signifies, hey, if you're in a short position, because it's a red X, you might want to take profit, and you can see it here as well. And they're really, really good at pinpointing market bottoms, these red Xs. So you see, perfect take profit, perfect take profit. And then the blue Xs signify take profit on an uptrend or a long signal. So these are saying, okay, if you're in a long position, you might want to exit your position. So very simple to use. So now let's get into the settings because the settings are where people might even not know the settings exist. So you can double click on a signal or double click on the name of the indicator. I'm gonna double click on a signal, I find it easier. And we're gonna see all of these settings here. And they may appear daunting at first, but I can assure you they're relatively simple when we get into them. So we'll come back to presets and filters at the top once we've had a deeper dive. So these are your basic settings. So we have the signal mode. So you can see we have confirmation plus exits and that's what we're on at the moment. We also have confirmation minimal. So let's say you want a cleaner chart and you don't like these big signals on your chart. It turns these signals, the confirmation signals into these little arrows on your chart. So the bigger arrows signify strong signals and the little arrows signify those normal signals that we were looking at earlier. They're the exact same signals in the exact same places, just shown differently for someone that might like a cleaner charting experience. Very simple to use. I'm gonna go back to confirmation and exits. We also have signal sensitivity. So basically consider this like maybe the length on a moving average. Of course the signals do not use a moving average, but consider it like that. If I up 12 to let's say 40, let's see what happens to the signals. We see far, fewer signals that are more laggy. So let's say, look, I'll, I'll reduce it down to 12. Let's see what happens or 40. See more signals, they're more responsive. But if they're more responsive, it can mean maybe they're subject to more fake outs and noise. If we raise signal sensitivity to let's say 50, let's have a look what happens. Fewer signals, but less noise. So we get more laggy signals. Lag isn't necessarily a bad thing, but the signals are a bit more delayed, but you get fewer of them. So let's say you want to use the signals to identify large trends in the market. Well, maybe you'd want a higher signal sensitivity there. Very simple to use. And the default, of course, is, is 12, because that's what we believe to be a nice uh, middle ground. And let's say you want something even more sensitive, you could reduce it to even four. And now you just get 
so many signals and it's super sensitive and the algorithm really tries to identify every tiny move in the market. Whereas a high sensitivity, it will identify those larger moves in the market. We also allow you to modify the candle coloring. So there's a few candle coloring modes. We have confirmation gradient, which will change the color of your candles into more of a gradient rather than just a green, purple and red. It will gradient between them, making identification of trends a smoother experience. And we also have something called contrarian gradient, which I'll get into in a second. So we've covered the first two. And now let's go on to contrarian plus exits. So contrarian signals are a bit more of an advanced concept. So confirmation signals and normal signals that you'd see um, elsewhere rely on trends. So they will appear once a trend has changed direction. So if the market's in an uptrend and then it starts going into a downtrend, your algorithm is going to wait for that downtrend to begin. But hey, if you're waiting for that downtrend to begin, that means you're wasting or you're not getting in at the exact top because you have to wait for the market to start to come down. So what we've done is we've added in contrarian signals, which are a bit more of an advanced concept. So these are signals that are designed to go against the trend or contrary to the trend. So you can see here we're in an uptrend, but a sell signal appears on this green candle. So it's trying to predict a trend reversal in the market. And you can see here, we have a sell signal here. The market continues to go up a little bit and then it comes down. So this is a bit more advanced because it requires the trader or, or you guys to understand that they're trying to identify exact tops and bottoms in real time. So of course, they're not gonna be 100% accurate. They're going to be there to assist you in maybe entering or taking profit. They're very versatile. So yes, we get a sell signal, the market goes up a little bit, but it then starts to come down. We get a strong buy signal here and the market goes down a little more, then it comes up. And when you see our exit signals are still present here. We get a sell signal at the top, it comes down. And then of course, in a very heavy trending market, like what has occurred here, maybe it's not gonna be perfect. Look, it's a complete dud, but there you go. We're trying to identify tops and bottoms in real time. So it has some utility, just requires that deeper understanding. So let's open up the settings again. And you'll see in signal mode, we also have contrarian minimal, which all it does, guess what? turns the signals into the little arrows again for a minimal cleaner charting experience. We also have contrarian gradient candle coloring, which is the final candle coloring mode, which is based off of the contrarian signals. So as the market may reverse, you see green candles, you see green candles at the bottom of the trend. And maybe if it's uh, topping out, you're gonna see red candles. So you may want to buy on green candles, sell on the red candles. And that's how you might want to use the contrarian gradient. So I'm just going to revert everything back to normal. We also finally, and we, then we've covered the basic signals. Let, let's change them back to exit. We have autopilot signal settings which is, is going to analyze the market conditions. It's going to take a look at the market, see is the market ranging or going sideways or is it trending? If it's ranging, you want to become more sensitive to these price movements because you see they're smaller. So the algorithm becomes more sensitive. And if the market is trending like here, you see we're not seeing any signals. So the signal sensitivity is increased. And this is done dynamically behind the scenes. You guys won't be able to look at what it's actually doing or how it's changing things. However, it can be a nice alternative. If you do not like to change the signal sensitivity, you might want to use autopilot, which is a valid approach. Now I've blown up the dashboard. Um, and put it in the top right hand corner. I'll show you guys how to do that at the end. But let's have a quick glimpse at this. So it's a very simple dashboard to use and you can turn it off if you don't like it, if it's too much information, but let's quickly skim through it. I have a dedicated video on my channel of this, but let's go through it. At the top, we have optimal sensitivity. So as I mentioned, our signals have sensitivity. So what this is going to do is it's going to tell you it's going to run a little back test, a micro back test, and it's going to tell you what was the best sensitivity. And you can see I've changed it to 30 as recommended, and it's given us some clean signals. And this can be annoying because you have to change it from time to time every time this updates, but that's what it's doing. Trend strength tells you the strength of the trend in the market. So at the moment, the market is heavily trending upwards, so we have a high percentage. You can see if you hover the dashboard, it, it tells you. So it's a heavy trending market. And we see a green sell because it's trending up. If the market is ranging, 
it will be zero. It will be a very low value, so you'll get zero. And if the market is trending either up or down, we're going to see a higher value there. So it's nice to identify trending markets. Next up, Lux Volatility will tell you the volatility in the market. At the moment, this is a fairly smooth moving market. If we're seeing very volatile, choppy market, we're going to see a high volatility market. And then we have a squeeze, and a squeeze essentially refers to how much is the market starting to squeeze into a range. This would be defined as a squeeze. When it's squeezing, the market is compressing into a small range. This is not a squeeze at all. The market is trending in a direction, so we have a low squeeze value, and that can go to 100%. So the theory goes, if you see a high squeeze value, the market's about to do something explosive. If you see a squeeze of 70%, 80%, 90%, the market's getting ready for an explosion. It's squeezing in. And volume sentiment just analyzes the volume, tells you whether the volume is looking bullish or bearish. And you can see if it's a green cell, it's looking bullish. If it's a red cell, it's looking bearish. I'm going to turn off the dashboard for the moment, which you can do by going to your advanced settings. You can change dashboard location if you want. And you can change the dashboard size over here. But you can turn off the dashboard in the indicator overlay, which we're going to get into now. So I'm going to turn off the signals for this part. You can go to signal mode and turn them off. And we're going to take a look at our overlays. So our overlays are often considered the star of the show. People like to load up Lux Algo, they see the signals and they're like, wow, these are really, really good. And I'm just going to use the signals. But often users that have been using Lux for a longer time fall in love with the overlays over the signals. So let's go through them briefly. Number one is the smart trail. Let's turn that on. The smart trail essentially is a trailing stop and it shows you a cloud of resistance and support. When it's red, market's going in a downtrend. When it's blue, it's going in an uptrend. So you might want to sell when it turns red, buy when it turns blue. But it has a dual functionality and its dual functionality is where its magic really lies. You can see the cloud has turned red and the price starts to come up and we find resistance on the smart trail and it comes down. We go up, we find resistance on the smart trail and it comes down. So it acts as a dynamic support and resistance. If it's red and the price comes up and tests it, hey, you might want to enter a short position here. And it's kind of a contrarian methodology again because you're going against the trend and it's telling you nice areas you might want to consider shorting. And you can see it's going to do the same thing uh, on an uptrend, bounce off of it, bounce off of it, bounce off of it bounces off of it in this downtrend. Really nice to identify, hey, is this a retracement? If the market's going up and you've missed your entry and it comes down and it touches a smart trail, perfect. Enter on the retest of a smart trail. Really nice indicator to use. I really suggest that. Uh, it's one of my personal favorites. I really suggest playing about with that. Next up, we have the reversal zones. Uh, let's switch to a, to a more reasonable time frame. So the reversal zones, it's in their name what they do. They are zones where the price might reverse, and they're particularly effective in a ranging market. You can see the price comes down, bounces off a reversal zone. Price comes up, bounces off a reversal zone. Into the reversal zone, bounces up. Out of the reversal zone, bounces down. Into the reversal zone, bounces up. Really useful indicator in a ranging market. Also, one of my favorites. We have two zones to the cloud, the inner and the outer. And basically, when the price reaches the outer area of the cloud, it's just considered a higher chance of reversal. So here, yes, it reverses a little bit. But you see, when we go into the deeper, darker area of the reversal cloud, we experience a stronger reversal. So that's how you can use it. They're best used in ranging markets, but also one of my favorite features in Lux Algo. Next up, we have the trend catcher, which is one of our most popular features uh, by far. And it's basically a line that follows the price action. You can see green means it's going up, red means it's going down. And the trend catcher, by its name, you can tell it tries to catch trends. So yes, it's following trends very classically here, but it can also attempt to predict the bottom of a trend. So you can see the trend catcher actually turned green before the market starts going up. And that's what it's designed to do. It can give you early trend reversals and actually be predictive uh, in nature. So for example, here you can see the trend catcher is flipped to red here. It tries to predict those changes while being classical. Really nice to follow trends with. We also have the trend tracer, which is displayed with uh, with these X's that are about to appear. And this just follows trends very classically. People like it because it's simplistic. You see green X's in an uptrend, red X's in a downtrend. Makes following trends quite simple 
um, and it's quite a classical indicator. People like to use them with the with that and the trend catch together, and maybe a, a valid system is when the two cross over. Someone might like to sell here when they cross over bullish. Someone might like to buy. Very simple indicators to use. I'm going to come to the EQ cloud next, which is just a cloud that provides support and resistance to the price with a color. Blue cloud means the price is going up. You can see the price is going up and it's blue. And when the price is going down, it's red. And this cloud also acts as a support and resistance. The price knocks against it, comes down, breaks through it, finds a bit of support, bounces, bounces, kind of plays about under the cloud, but it's still a blue cloud and we go up. So it's a very classical cloud that you can use to trade um, in a ranging market is of course going to struggle a bit but like for example here we see a nice trending market bounce on the inside of the cloud cloud flips blue here so we know it's a nice time to buy we bounce off the cloud and we go up the neo cloud is basically the same logic when the cloud is blue market is an up in an uptrend you can see it's blue and it's held its blue state all in this market uptrend very nicely and it also acts as a support and resistance to the price. You can see the price likes to play about with the cloud a lot. Bounces on the top of the cloud, bounces on the underneath, um, bounces off the bottom, bounces off the top. It finds a lot of support in these areas. And it's also good for trend following. Like I said, in an uptrend, you're going to see blue. In a downtrend, you're going to find red. So someone, for example, might like to use this as a filter, just as, a, as an example. You might want to turn on your confirmation signals and you might for example only want to take buy signals when the neo cloud is blue so buy here buy here buy here and that means you ignore all of these bad sell signals and vice versa so it's a nice it can be used as a filter as well and then we have the tpsl points and these provide you nice entries and exits for trades because i've turned off the signals it's going to turn purple because I, we're not buying or selling but you can see here when you got the signal it would have produced this TPSL setup and these just give you levels where you might want to take profit. You can already see it's hit our take profit too and it's just handy for identifying take profits. So now we've covered basically everything. We've done indicator overlay, we've done most of the basic settings, but we're going to see the agility here. So what is the agility? So agility is the second setting for our signals and it's not something you need to touch unless you're using OptiBot. If you're using OptiBot, it will give you the confirmation signals agility. If you're not using OptiBot, ignore this setting. It doesn't affect you. Autopilot frequency. So I've changed autopilot frequency just now to uh, short term, which means autopilot is going to try and produce more signals. And if I select the long term, autopilot is going to try and produce less signals. And wow, look at that. It's producing very clean long-term signals for us to use. If you're a scalper, hey, maybe you'll prefer short-term signals. So that gives autopilot a higher sense of usability and it can be more adaptive in that nature. You can change your dashboard location if you have it turned on and you can change the size of your dashboard. So now finally, let's get into the presets and filters. So a preset is basically a configuration. You can see if it says in square brackets here, it's a preset. It's a configuration that we think might help there's a certain type of trader. If you're a swing trader, for example, you'll load up the swing trader and you can see it's loaded up the Neo cloud and it's loaded up some confirmation signals. If you're a contrarian trader and you like to go against the trend, well, it's going to load up contrarian signals and a reversal zone because these are nice for spotting bottoms and tops in real time and you can see really nice performance there. And I'll let you guys play about with these presets and what they do. It's in the name, scalpers for scalping, yada, yada. We also have filters. So these will automatically filter your signals for you. So you can see we have two buy signals in a row. And basically this filter is of course called the smart trail filter. So it's only gonna take buy signals when the smart trail is blue. And it's only gonna take sell signals when the smart trail is red. So it means if there's a sell signal in a strong uptrend, it's going to ignore it, meaning you're not going to get caught out by the market, making your trading experience far cleaner. We also have Neo Cloud Filter, which is going to filter the signals. So you only get buy signals during a blue Neo Cloud and only sell signals during a red Neo Cloud. And the Trend Tracer will filter buy signals when it's green, sell signals when it's red. And finally, trend strength filter. The trend strength filter, in the dashboard, we have a metric called trend strength, as I showed you guys earlier, that determines how strong the market is trending from zero to 100. 
if the market is ranging, it's going to avoid confirmation signals because confirmation signals like to have trends. But in a trending market, it will give you those signals. So you see here, because the market is trending, we see a sell signal. In a ranging market, it avoids getting caught up and, and chopped out by the market. So these filters are really handy to use um, if, you're, if you're a newer trader. We have our alerts down here. Uh, which may look daunting at first, but it's fairly simple. We have confirmation buy, which will alert you on a normal buy signal. So if you want to be alerted on just a buy signal, you'd select confirmation buy. If you want to be alerted on a strong buy, you select strong buy. This strong buy is next to this confirmation buy, meaning it's referring to the strong buys. Confirmation sell, which is of course our normal sell signals, and confirmation strong sell, so these strong confirmation signals. And then, of course, we have our other mode, our contrarian signals. So for our contrarian buys, for our contrarian strong buys, for our contrarian sells, for our contrarian strong sells. And we have exit buy for those blue X's, exit sell for these red X's. And we have confirmation buy turn strong, which is mean a purple candle turning green. And it will alert you when the purple turns green. And confirmation sell turn strong means the purple turning red, meaning there's a strong downtrend beginning. So let's say you wanted an alert, an alert for everything that occurs. You click OK, you tick them all, you click on alerts, you click add alert, and you go to Lux Algo Premium, and you select any alert because it's using the any alert function that we've designed for you. Um, and you can ignore this alert. This is defaulted by TradingView. It's, it's not relevant here. So you can se select an alert and really customize an alert and mix and match there. We also have a filtered alert creator. So Obviously, you can set alerts on normal buy and sell signals, like I've shown here, or you can do it like this. You can go to indicators, you can do add, you can click Lux Algo, and you see in this list, you can select an alert on any confirmation signal, whether it's a buy, a sell, a strong buy, a strong sell. You can select alerts on exit signals once per bar close, and there you've created an alert very simply. Filtered alert goes a bit deeper. So let's say we wanted to be alerted when we have a buy signal and the smart trail is blue. So let's turn on our smart trail. Let's have a look at what we see on our chart. Let's say we only want to be, to be alerted on strong buy signals when the, uh, the smart trail is blue. Well, first you go into the signal, you'd find confirmation strong buy, and we want to use a smart trail when it's going up, it's blue. And there we are. And we can click OK, we go to alert, we go to Lux Algo Premium, we go to filter signal alert, once per bar close, and there we are. It's going to be filtering that alert for you and those signals for you, very simply. And you can filter any signals using most of the overlays um, you could you could design. You can even use custom indicators and, and that's a bit more advanced. So this toolkit is very, very dynamic and goes very deep. There's a lot to explore a million combinations you can do um, and you can get really creative with it and go through the toolkit and see what you enjoy. So hopefully this video has been a nice recap and overview if you're new to uh, Lux Algo signals and overlays and let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me cover next.